Today we're looking at part five of Project Holycroft, where we're actually taking a look at the model. It's already been built over the previous four sessions. We've looked at the building of it, the renovation of it, the changing of the data, and now what we're actually doing is looking at how we can retrofit the building to improve its building performance over its lifetime. So, as I say, this is part five. I'm Ken Good, and in a little bit, you will see we're also going to be joined by Toby, who's going to talk through the actual process of how the the retrofit and the building performance is analysed. So we'll pass over to him in a couple of minutes' time. So today, as I say, what we're doing is looking at part five, the retrofit and building performance. There was already a session on Friday. Today is, is Monday, for those of you that are still a little sleepy. Hope you had a good weekend and all that. But uh, today, what we're going to be looking at is... Obviously, I'm doing a little bit of an intro just now, but what Toby's going to do is run through these various aspects of how we actually configure the building so that it can be analysed for building performance and how we can retrofit upgrades to improve the way it performs. So there's various things that we need to look at, how the fills, the materials, the composites are put together, how we can actually define the spaces in the building because we need to know what function each space or zone has. Environmental settings, so today if I look out the window, it's grey and wet. I don't know if we can localise it that much, but we'll see. We look at the energy source, so depending on which part of the country you happen to be in, uh, being in sunny Scotland as I am, there's a lot of wind farms about, so the actual CO2 footprint for the production of electricity is not that high, uh, as opposed to other areas of the country that still rely on coal-fired power plants, stuff like that. So uh, we'll look at those, the building systems themselves, the operation profiles, so what use is the actual building, what does it do, and the climate data. So uh, it'd be quite interesting for what it says here just now because it's freezing. But anyway, after that we'll have a Q&A session. I will probably do, to be honest, based on the numbers we've got, it's probably gathered together the questions and respond to them as a follow-up email afterwards rather than have... 25 sets of the same question, etc. So we'll come back to that shortly. If this is the, the first actual session you've attended, then where have you been? Because there's been four other sessions already, as I mentioned. The, the first three uh, were between September and October last year, where we looked at taking this existing 1920s building, how we actually modelled the existing building, how we then renovated an extension on the back of it. So we took it from a single storey to a double storey and sort of reconfigured the layout of the first floor. Then we looked at how that was all coordinated, how the documentation was done and how that could be communicated to others. And then a couple of weeks ago, what we did as, as part of the follow-up based on the, the feedback from the first three was look at how that data could be scheduled because there's a lot of valuable information in that model. So there's a session on scheduling and as I say, today's session is looking at the, the retrofit side of things as well. If you haven't seen those, as a follow-up to this session, there will be an email uh, in the next couple of days. Part of that will be a couple of links that give you access to the previous four sessions, and there'll also be a recorded version of this if you want to go over any of it again and pass it on to colleagues, etc. So if you keep an eye out for that in the next couple of days, you'll get an email with those details. But what I'm going to do now is pass the screen across to Toby, and Toby's going to take you into Archicad and go through the retrofitting of this Hollycroft model. So what I'm going to do, if you bear with me, is pass this across. Good morning. Hi. Um, my, my name's Toby, Toby Rollison. Um, uh, last year, we did some work um, using, uh, really using Eco Designer and Ultra Low Energy Buildings, specifically Passive House, and see how um, Eco Designer results uh, relate to the PHPP results and um, it's quite interesting that they're, they're, they're really were very, very much better than I expected and um, after that um, Ken asked me to just uh, show you how, how we use um, Eco Designer to e evaluate the energy energy analysis on, on the building. As you can see this is the, uh, the model, this is the, the main model, it's, there's nothing uh, different or special about it for um, thermal analysis and what I'll do is I'll hide off, to start off I'll hide off the main structure and just show the zones because the zones are what the um, eco designer uses to to evaluate the energy. Right, first off, let's talk about a little bit how it works and the way it works is it interrogates it, each zone interrogates its surrounding areas and looks at the at the composites and the materials that surround it to work out what sort of um, energy use those surrounding materials will need. It's 
it uses fills, ARCHICAD fills, to, um, to build up its material. So if I just show you those very briefly, what we've got is we've got um, under element options, you've got fill types. And if we take a fill and just make it a duplicate, here we've got rigid intonation, and we'll give it a new fill and we'll call it rigid intonation, say, Kingspan. Okay. So there's your, there's your basic fill, but within this you have a, a, an additional area called thermal properties. So if you click material catalog and go into uh, thermal insulation plastic foam, which is this particular type, and, and pick up the um, elements from the nearest one. So if we have a look at, say, polyfoam here, we know that the thermal conductivity of, of Kingspan, for instance, is 0 0.022. So just by doing that, we've created our, our own new material set. And what I'd recommend is for each insulation that you you use within your thermal model is make sure that you have a, a separate material set for each insulation. Right, the, the next element is is uh, is we're going to talk about composites, if you like. And if you go back to options and then attributes and composites, here is a list of all the composites that are used within the building. What Ken has done is he's put HOL, which is project specific, in front of each composite name. And um, that really does help identify. So if we open, say, the external wall, you can see it's fairly simple. It's just a, a common brick wall. If we open um, cavity wall, it's a bit more complicated. What we've got, so we've got an external leaf of common brick, and we've got an air space, and we've got our Kingspan insulation. Then we've got a thermal block, and then we've got our plaster. So that's how um, the eco designer zones pick up the uh, uh, thermal uh, properties of their adjoining structures. So it's important that those are as accurately modeled as possible. So if we just highlight the zone, and we can see exactly um, how it's made, it's a, a simple, um, straightforward standard ARCHICAD zone. You have to uh, obviously put the, the height information in. You have to draw it. it it's a very quick process. Um, what I would say is that for the new version of Eco Designer, it's very important that you keep um, the inner leaf of the zone exactly the same as the inner leaf of the surrounding structure. Otherwise, it won't pick it up. So um, it's quite uh, important, particularly in this case. For instance, we've got a height of, of 2410. And, um, and that's simply because that's the height of the adjoining um, ceiling. And uh, if, if that's a different height, it won't pick up the structure. So let's, let's um, move on now and go into um, EcoDesigner itself and have a quick look around that. So EcoDesigner, access via the design menu and go to energy evaluation, energy model review. On the far right hand side, you'll see um, additional data inputs. And it's important to add these additional data inputs before um, you start your evaluation. So let's go into environmental settings. And this essentially is explaining to EcoDesigner where the project is. So have a look at the project location. What I've done here is I've taken the postcode and I've used one of the number of free apps that are available on the internet to convert the postcode into a, long, long, a latitude and longitude. Make sure you've got your time zone in, and once you, you're pretty confident that you're in the right spot, if you click Show in Google Maps, it will very quickly identify if we're looking in the right place. Here's our office, actually, and this is um, this is where we're showing the building. This is how we're simulating it. All right, so I'll cancel that. And once you've done that, the um, the weather data is automatically downloaded. And the next section in this area is, is wind protection. If you're looking at a very exposed site, and here we're actually got a very um, a very protected side. But if you're looking at a very exposed side, then you can change these um, elements to uh, the set elements to unprotected and partially protected and completely protected. And and the reason for that is that um, in real world performance, when a when a building is exposed to a lot of wind, especially if it's not particularly airtight, the uh, the thermal performance of the building actually reduces really, really quite a lot. So um, that's the reason for adding that. And the next point is external shading. And um, obviously, a lot of buildings are 
are um, located next to trees or or cliffs or large um, large buildings of other types. Any any large element. If that is the case, then it's important to to add the um, add the shading in. And the reason for that is um, it will affect the solar gain um, in the summer. So you know quite quite a lot of the heat available to the building essentially sunlight through the windows. So um, that uh, not shaded shaded will affect that figure. So once you've got your environmental settings set up, next thing to do is to go down to your operation profile. And your operation profiles, EcoDesign has a whole set of standard operation um, profiles. This particular building is a is a residential building. Um, but what you can do if you want to is you can say it's partially residential and it's partially an office. So you can say, well, look, maybe it's a personal office as well, which is here, and maybe the personal office space is 15% and the uh, residential space is 85%. Um, unless the total adds up to 100, it won't let you save that figure. The next section under the operation profiles, I'm not quite sure where they put that here, but they have the lighting scheme. If you have a look at these um, internal heat gain figures here on the right hand side, now um, all buildings are subject to internal heat gain, provided they're occupied. And, and that can be um, human beings obviously create about 100 watts and um, certainly uh, different lighting schemes can create quite a bit of heat uh, along with uh, obviously things like sort of baths and cooking and all the other things that people do. So ha have a look at the, um, the lighting um, element of this internal heat gains here and have a look what happens when we change it to incandescent and you can see that the internal heat gains from the lighting bump up quite considerably and that's obviously because incandescent lights produce an awful lot of, of heat energy um, and not that much light energy actually so let's go back to fluorescent tubes and I'll cancel out of that building systems and what we've got here is we've got quite um, uh, energy efficient boiler it's quite a relatively modern boiler um, it serves the heating and hot water and the cooling type is natural and that's quite important um, under this area not to put your heating type as natural unless you live in a very warm climate. Um, generally speaking in Northern Europe um, buildings require heating even ultra low energy buildings and um, they also require uh, some hot water service. Under this um, area here we've also got green systems and as it stands at the moment we haven't got any green systems and I'll, I'll run through those a little bit later but um, that's where you, you find the tap. And you've also got um, energy source factors and energy costs. Now, those can also be accessed uh, directly from here. So, energy source factors. Uh, what this basically means is how clean or dirty your energy is. Um, as Ken mentioned earlier, uh, uh, electricity is sort of changing in some parts of the of the world. It's it's actually a relatively clean fuel now, and, and in some parts, um, it's enormously dirty. So. That's changing. I've just taken here as a default. Um, it might be worth if um, looking at your your local suppliers and seeing uh, what sort of CO2 emissions per um, kilogram uh, 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 kilowatt hour um, the uh, the local supplier actually actually gives you. And the last but the most least are energy costs. Now, energy costs certainly here in the UK are actually a little bit opaque, like other things. Um, what they tend to do is run on tariffs of uh, it's so much for the first um, uh, so many kilowatt hours, so much for the next, and so much for the rest. Um, but what I've done is I've taken what could be seen as standard figures, um, and these again are freely available from your um, energy suppliers' websites. Um, and, and quite interesting to note that in terms of kilowatt hour, uh, natural gas is, is obviously much cheaper than electricity. So, you know, obviously that's um, as you will know about, but um, that will obviously inform your heating um, heating requirements. So, let's cancel out of that one. Um, before I go into the structures page, let's have a look at openings. And um, what we've got uh, under openings is is each window is grouped. Uh, and just like this. this shows the uh, so if you can see they're sort of overlapping but um, by clicking this button here 
you're highlighting the zones, and these are the zones that we're going to evaluate in a minute. Um, by running through the different elements, these highlight the windows. So if we have a look at this south, these two south windows here, and just highlight them, what, what they are as standard is they are uh, a clear single glazed window with a traditional frame. And if you wish to change that, there's an awful lot of different options that are standard within Eco Design that you can change those to. Or you can also um, change your uh, figures manually. The other thing to take a look at here is the shading. So have we got any additional shading? Uh, it's not uncommon in low energy buildings to put some additional shading, certainly on the west and south, um, south sides. And have we got any additional horizontal shading? Um, the infiltration is the air leakage around that um, detail. And the PSI value is the additional heat loss around the perimeter of the window. Um, it's where the, the window might, for instance, in this particular case, um, sit into the brickwork. And, and obviously, there's an additional gap there, if you like, a, a thermal gap where, um, where heat can leak through. Right, so let's go to structures now. So what I normally would do is uh, is group these in one of two ways. So if you have a look at orientation, um, that's quite a useful way to group, group things. Um, move this over slightly and um, have a look at the slab. As you can see that's highlighted the ceiling slab here and basically south facing currently. Let's have a look at some walls. This is the wall around the fireplace. Um, and one of the um, questions that came up uh, after last Friday's um, session was about Archicad zones and why don't they go to the center lines of wall. One of the reasons for that is that, unlike a lot of programs, Archicad is very good at picking up which, um, which zones are internal, which zones are external. So if we have a quick look at these, walls here, you can see that's a, 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 a stud partition. And Archicad realizes that both those zones actually share that wall. So that's that's one of the reasons that um, the zones don't have to go to the center lines of walls. OK, so the first thing I'm going to have a look at is a compliance check on our existing walls, and also on our new walls, our new cavity walls. So these are called HOR new cavity walls. So if I highlight the new value calculator, and you can see here the U value is coming out at 0.36. Now, that's not really quite good enough to meet building regulations as it stands at the moment. Now, the reason the reason that that figure is 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 showing as it is actually that's a bit too too poor um, is that Eco Designer's U value calculator uh, takes into account the thermal bridge effect and will. Um, turn this into sort of an area weighted U value if you like. So it looks at we've got a thermal bridge effect of 0.8, we've got so many meters of thermal bridge, and overall that rounds down this figure to 0.36. So if I change that to zero, what you can see now is that figure's now changed to 0.28. And that is a traditional U value through the structure. Um, but for, for analysis purposes, what you really do need to do is to keep the, the cold bridge effect in place. So simply checking the U-value, that's your answer. Doing you energy analysis, that's your answer. Right, OK, so EcoDesigner, as you can see, has picked up the U-values of all the various elements. And you know that that's being read directly from the model because uh, this little key there is locked. I'll show you how to deal with that uh, a bit later on when we're looking at thermally upgrading the building. Okay, so we very briefly talked about this little button here. Um, it has a couple of functions. The first one is to show the zone volumes, and that's toggling it on and off. And the next one is to show uncovered areas. And that's totally on and off. And what uncovered areas does is it shows where you've got any potential um, mistakes actually in your in your um, in your zone. So you can see that 
where the bay windows are. Uh, what we could probably do is go back into the model and probably work those up slightly better and trim the top because in reality uh, there's a roof on there um, and there's a few other elements that we probably need to have a look at. Um, this is quite interesting. This will occur on all multi-story buildings, multi-story buildings where you've got um, your ground floor hall and your first floor hall joining. So um, what you can do if you've got a um, a building where that is, is a large area and it's going to be significant in your heat loss, um, it's important that you join those two together uh, by adding some additional zones maybe. But in, in this particular case it's actually pretty small and not, not really that significant. Okay, you can see how the zones are picked up the windows, etc, etc. So the next thing to do is to run our energy simulation. So let's start the energy simulation. Okay, here's your, here's your report. As you can see, it's pretty quick. Um, the uh, left-hand side shows some interesting information. You've got your floor areas, your uh, shed area, your ventilated volume, your glazing ratio, air leakage, and that's your air changes per hour. I would say that that's probably uh, slightly um, optimistic in this particular case. Um, you've got your outer heat capacity, and that's not so important in the UK. But um, in hot countries, that will uh, determine your cooling, um, cooling requirements. And um, you've got your different new values, your shell average, your different new values, your um, net energy efficiency, cooling efficiency, obviously, that's set to natural. And that's one of the most important reasons why you need to make sure that your heating energy is not set to natural, because um, eco designer will just look at that and say, well, there's no, there's no energy implication in that if it's such as yeah. Uh, energy consumption, primary energy, operation costs and CO2 emissions. Now, these are all quite interesting information, but perhaps from the client point of view, uh, not so accessible. So as you scroll down, the information probably gets a little bit easier for them to understand. So, so um, what we've got here, we've got a figure for uh, uh, natural gas, uh, fossil fuel, of 5,011, including uh, hot water generation and heating. Um, I thought that was fantastically high, but I did speak to the owner of the building, and he said she was about right, which is um, a little bit uh, 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 upsetting. But anyway, that's nice. Um, and the uh, electricity is is purely for lighting in this particular case, and uh, in internal things like TVs, etc., fridges, and and that's 731 pounds. So it has some graphs about breakdowns of energy costs, and those are quite easy to understand. And then if we go scroll down, it breaks down the um, heating costs and the uh, and the cost in more detail. Um, first, first off, the heating cost so that's four thousand uh, one hundred thirty-nine pounds a year as it stands. Uh, the cooling cost is zero because the room doesn't require cooling. Hot water generation is eleven hundred pounds a year. Uh, there's no ventilation fan, so that's zero. And lighting and appliances is four hundred ninety-four. Let's scroll down a bit more. We've got um, a little bit more information about how um, the energy is supplied on a month by month basis and how it's used on a month by month basis. So that's again quite useful information for the client to have a look at. And you can save this either as a PDF um, just by doing that, or you can save it as an Excel spreadsheet. And the Excel spreadsheet um, does provide quite a bit more information. So um, and also, it's a live Excel spreadsheet, so you can, uh, you can, if you wanted to, uh, what if situations on that. So that's essentially um, Eco Designer as it stands, as the building stands currently. Right. What I'll do now, very quickly, is I'll show you a building which, um, in true Blue Beauty style, we've done already. Um, we've already retrofitted. So, what, what differences have we made? Um, have a quick look at the. Uh, element attributes and the composites. Um, what I've done essentially is a, a couple of things. Um, the external wall, which as we saw earlier was a simple brick wall, we've added um, a wood fibre board uh, to the internal layer, an installation wood fibre board, which I think here is uh, 60 millimetres. And on the ceiling, um, upper floor, uh, I've made the ceiling thickness, the insulation thickness, 300 millimeters. Actually, not. I mean, we're not going too mad. That's that's uh, 
using a, a wood fibre board is quite a good way of upgrading an historic building like this or a, a traditional building because um, it's very vapour open and uh, allows um, the building to breathe. So that's the uh, reasoning behind that. So I'll cancel out of that. This again is just the, um, the zone showing, although you know the the, uh, the main model is exactly the same. So back into energy evaluation, energy model review. The first thing you need to do now, because we've changed these elements, is update the zones. So update all zones, and that's that's done. And if we can do have a quick look at this section again, the environmental settings are the same, the climate data is the same, the operation profile is the same, building building systems. What, um, what I've done is already got a fairly efficient boiler. Um, we're already naturally cooling it. Um, I've included a, um, a ventilation system, so it's supplied exhaust. I've changed the air change down to 0.5 air changes an hour. And have a look at the green systems. I've allowed a five square meter uh, solar thermal collector um, and an air to air recovery. So that's for your MVHR unit, for your ventilation unit. I haven't allowed a heat pump or anything like that currently. And the operation profiles um, the lighting is now LED lighting as opposed to, um, as opposed to uh, compact fluorescence. So my energy costs are always, always the same. Um, right, have a look at the openings. What I've done on the openings, um, we'll go into that quite a bit, is I've changed the glazing to a triple glazed window. So it's a good quality window. And it's also saying it's really nicely installed. So um, the frame is, uh, is an insulated frame um, and it's got a PSI value of 0 0.09. So that's your uh, heat leakage around the window and it's got much lower infiltration so it's an air leakage around the window of, of, of 0.12 and the U value as you can see here is 0 0.72 which is a pretty good for a, a glazed unit. Um, so I've changed all those. Um, the structures remain the same. It reads them directly off the model. So you can see that the cavity wall is still 0.36. The um, 250 external wall though has come down because of the additional insulation so that's now uh, 0.54. Let's just check our, our uh, here we go and start the energy analysis. So um, again I won't go through this too much, let's go straight down to the chase and um, here we've got our heating um, and hot water generation requirements. So as you can see the, the heating uh, cost has come down from just over 4,000 to 1278. So it's quite a big jump down. And the, um, there are some additional costs for the ventilation fans. So that's £122 a year. The lighting and appliances by using those um, uh, energy efficient LED lighting has come down quite considerably. And the hot water generation has also come down. So um, how these figures made up, we've got um, solar collectors uh, here, the exhaust there, this is your heat recovery in the exhaust there, uh, the natural gas still being required here, and your um, electricity is obviously here. So that that um, is the, uh, the revised figures for your uh, monthly energy balance. So uh, that's energy in, energy out, and you can see that's much more efficient than it was. And again, that can be saved out as a PDF, etc., etc. The last section I'm going to show you, let's just close out of that, is to manually override now all the existing external walls and slabs. So highlight them all off, just hold down the shift key, highlight them all down, and unlock the, uh, the key. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to change that to 0.16. There we are, so that's changed all those off. And now we're just going to run our energy evaluation again. I personally um, don't like changing it manually, but sometimes you have to for you know, just for reasons that you're running out of time, you haven't got time to update your composite. So let's start the uh, energy simulation now. And you can see by reducing to the really those quite low levels, um, the heating bills come down again. Now it's 500 pounds. And um, obviously, it's not affecting the uh, all these figures too much, but you know, will affect the uh, 
the primary heating mode. So, and and you can see that here's your uh, monthly energy balance as well. That's altered. So, uh, so that's um, that's that. So let's just recap um, in terms of your. Let's come out of here again now. So in terms of your, you know, before you start doing your modelling, make sure that all your fill types are specific to uh, to what you want them to be in terms of thermal energy. So let's have a quick look at that one now. And um, we've got the thermal conductivity and all the, all the other various items within that. So what I'd recommend is if you make sure that each um, insulation type that you have within the building is uh, individually modeled before you start. And um, once you've done that, you can then make up your composites, which um, I mean, you know, they're very easy to do. So uh, here, here's the uh, job specific composites on this particular one. So sort your composites out. And once you've done that, then you can add your zones. So your zones are um, it's a very quick, easy job to uh, to add, add zones onto uh, into Archicad uh, models. I'm sure you have to do that. And, um, and once those items are in place, then you can start looking at your thermal models. So, right, I think um, if there's uh, any questions or any, uh, any you requiring more information, then, then of course be in touch. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Toby. I'll um, take the screen back so I can switch back um, to the PowerPoint. There we go. Technology is amazing. Should have actually pointed out that uh, Toby and myself are not sitting next to each other. We are actually 300 odd miles apart. So uh, there's not much eye to eye contact here. So it's a little bit difficult to take the cues sometimes. But anyway, uh, in the meantime, if you need to get in touch with us, the details are on screen. But thanks again for taking the time to watch the session. Thanks again to Toby. And if there's anything you need, give us a shout.